Welcome to the sew along video tutorial for my third design for Nomi pattern, the ME2066. In this video, I'm going to take you through my process of sewing up a red and pink color block version of this design. Now, there's going to be some differences between my method of sewing up this dress versus what's detailed in the instructions over here. There is always different ways of sewing the same thing and at the end of the day, you really just want to pick a method that works best for you your sewing machine and the fabric and the notions that you're using. For this version of the dress, I'm also making a belt that is smaller than my original design. So if you can't find the exact belt buckle size for this original version of my design, you can definitely still make a belt with the belt cutting guide in this video, which involves some math. Let's get started with sewing. The ME2066 is a color block design that uses a contrast fabric. For this dress, I'm using a pink 7 ounce twill as my main fabric and a red 7 ounce twill as my contrast. Now, because of the number of pattern pieces involved, things can get pretty confusing. So I recommend labeling your fabric pieces as you go. I do that with acronyms. So for example, SSB means skirt side back. Remember to also mark the notches and the circles. It might seem a little time consuming now, but it makes sewing a lot easier later. So we're going to start by applying interfacing to these pieces. Follow the manufacturer's instructions when applying the interfacing. Start by sewing stay stitches along the front and back neckline of the yoke pieces. Next, sew the bodice side front and bodice front together. Press the seam towards the main fabric and top stitch on the right side. Do the same for the bodice side back and the bodice back. The curvature of these pieces are harder to match than the bodice front, so take your time to clip the curves and ease the raw edges together. The trick is to clip the concave edge so that you can spread the seam allowance to fit the convex curve. Press the seam towards the main fabric and top stitch. Next, attach the bodice back to the yoke back. Press the seam towards the yoke and top stitch. Do the same for the yoke front. Again, take your time to clip the curves so the pieces fit well together. This is another tricky seam. Go slow and remember to breathe. Here on the curved front yoke seam, you will also have to clip the seam allowance so the curved seam will sit nicely without any puckering. Press the seam allowance towards the yoke, then top stitch. Before we go on to the next stage of sewing, attach the bodice front and back together along the shoulder seams. At this stage, you should have the bodice front and back pieces looking like this. Instead of sewing the sleeves in the round, I am sewing it flat so it's easier to fit the sleeve cap nicely in the armhole. I find making a double fold hem with this 7 ounce twill makes the hem too bulky, so I prefer just trimming the raw edge with pinking shears and sewing a 5 8 inch wide single fold hem. Over here, I'm using my top stitching thread to sew the sleeve hem in place. Next, attach the sleeves to the armhole. When pinning the sleeves to the bodice, I like to start by matching the notches first, and then I match the small circles which I have marked out with a small snip in the seam allowance here. Clip the seam allowance of the bodice so that it will fit nicely with the curved edge of the sleeve head. Fitting a sleeve head is always tricky, so sometimes I like to sew the seam in small sections and work my way through the entire seam that way slowly. 
turn the bodice wrong side out and sew the side seam and underarm seam together in one single row of stitches. To sew the skirt, we're going to start by sewing the pocket facing to the pocket right sides together along the curved edge. To minimize the look of bulky stitches on the right side of the dress, I have opted to simply finish the unnotched edge of the pocket facing with pinking shears. Turn the pocket facing to the wrong side of the pocket, press and then under stitch the facing. Top stitch the finished edge of the curved pocket opening. Sew the skirt front pieces together along the edge below the end of the zipper opening. You should also sew along the marked stitching lines to reinforce the fabric. Attach the skirt front pieces to the skirt side pieces, press the seam towards the center and top stitch. Now we're going to prepare the center front zipper opening. Over here, I have the reinforcing stitches in light pink thread, so it's a little hard to see, but it's there. Clip the seam allowance at a 45 degree angle to the corner. Be careful and don't cut the reinforcing stitches. Next, fold and press the seam allowance along the sides and the bottom, and this is how the opening for the exposed zipper should look. If you find your fabric fraying a little in the corners, apply some fray check. At this stage, I also like to baste the seam allowance in place. Now we're going to sew the back of the skirt. Attach the skirt side back to the lower skirt side back, then attach that to the skirt back. Just like we did for the front of the skirt, press the seam allowance and top stitch the seams on the right side as you go. Place the front and back of the skirt right sides together and sew them together along the side seams. Now things are getting exciting and we're making a lot of progress. It's time to attach the bodice and skirt together. Place the bodice and the skirt right sides together, matching them at the side seams and the notches. Sew them together and press the seam towards the bodice. Sew the front facing and back neck facing pieces together along the shoulder seams. And just like we did with the skirt front, sew along the stitching lines and clip diagonally to the small circle marking. Before we sew the zipper in place, we need to press the seam allowance along the zipper opening to the wrong side of the dress. For this dress, I'm using a number 3 plastic molded zipper. The written instructions included with the pattern provides a guide for adjusting the length from the top of the zipper, but in this video, I will be cutting the excess zipper from the bottom because I had a hard time trying to find the right zipper length in the right color that is not a separating zipper. This red one here is a separating zipper and the bottom is just not the same as a regular closed bottom zipper and so this is how I got around the problem. To adjust the length of the zipper, I start off by figuring out how long the zipper needs to be for my dress. First, I lay the zipper against my dress, making sure that the top tooth of the zipper sits right below the seam between the front yoke and the bodice front. Then I pin the zipper to the dress from the top to the bottom of the zipper opening, making sure that the zipper is sitting nice and flat on the dress for an accurate measurement. Next, I mark the bottom of the zipper opening on the zipper tape with a small clip using a pair of scissors. Now, because I've shortened the length of the bodice to fit my body better, I have quite a few inches in excess with this 16 inch plastic zipper. Once the bottom stopper is removed, you need to be careful about unzipping the zipper all the way and make sure that you don't remove the slider from the zipper by mistake. Removing the zipper teeth rather than cutting the zipper tape off allows me to have some zipper tape for attaching the zipper to the dress. We are now ready to sew the zipper onto the dress. Use a zipper foot for this step. 
When attaching the zipper to the dress, make sure the top stopper sits right below the seam between the yoke and the bodice front. Move the slider down the zipper by about 2 inches first and start by sewing from the top left side of the zipper. When you get close to the slider, leave your needle in the dress, then lift the presser foot up and move the slider to the top, closing the zipper in the process. Basically, we're moving the slider out of the way when sewing the zipper in place. Continue sewing the left side of the zipper in the same way as before until you get to the bottom of the zipper. Do the same for the other side of the zipper. I'm not going to sugarcoat this, sewing the exposed zipper is probably the trickiest part of this sewing pattern. In this video, I decided to wrap the back of the bottom of the zipper with the remaining zipper tape. But the next time, I think I will actually wrap the front of the bottom of the zipper instead to kind of make like a DIY zipper stop. When I was done wrapping the zipper tape in place, I stitched the bottom of the zipper opening on the right side of the dress. And here's how the zipper looks now. And now it's time to sew the neck facing in place. Pin the neck facing along the front and back opening, right sides together. The right side of the facing should also be pinned to the right side of the zipper seam allowance. I like to start by sewing along the front neck facing first so I can make sure that I'm getting the v-neck opening on the point before sewing the rest of the facing in place. The zipper tape above the topmost tooth of the zipper should also be pushed out of the way when you're sewing. The corners of the zipper opening will feel bulky when you have it right sides out because of all the seam allowance and the excess zipper tape. So trim that off when you're done sewing the facing. Remember to also trim and clip the seam allowance along the back neckline so the neckline will sit nice and smooth. Understitch the facing along the front and the back neckline so the facing sits nicely in the dress. Now for the final step to finishing the facing, sew this little tail at the bottom of the skirt front and the facing together with your zipper foot. And this is how the zipper opening looks. If for some reason you don't like how the bottom of your exposed zipper looks, you can sew a little patch and place it over the bottom of the zipper. Make a U-shaped piece for a standard look or even try a triangular shape for a western vibe. Next, we're gonna start working on my favorite part of the dress, the flounce that goes around the bottom of the skirt. Sew the flounce pieces together along the straight sides. Make sure you press the seams for the front flounce and back flounce and top stitch the seams as indicated in the instructions. Sew the flounce facing pieces together to get one huge giant ring of fabric. Then attach it to the flounce along the bottom edge. Before we move on to the next step, we need to trim the seam allowance. The interfacing in the seam allowance here makes the seam really kind of bulky, so I like to trim the seam allowance of the facing to just about an eighth of an inch and then trim the seam allowance of the flounce in half with pinking shears. Next, understitch the flounce facing and this next part here is a little tedious but also kind of meditative. We're going to top stitch a total of six rows on the outside of the flounce with the first row a quarter inch from the finished edge and the next row a quarter inch from the row before. 
To make the carriers, fold the carrier piece in quarters lengthwise. While this is not indicated in the instructions, this time I actually decided to sew the carrier by top stitching close to the two long sides. I kind of just like the way top stitching looks over here. Cut this long carrier piece in four identical pieces and stitch them in place on the dress. Now I'm gonna show you how I made the belt for this dress. I made my own belt without the belt pattern piece included in the sewing pattern. To do that, I cut two pieces of rectangles with the following measurements. Next, I applied interfacing to one of the rectangles and then I drew a rounded end to the rectangle. With the two rectangles right sides together, I stitched them together along the long edge and the rounded end, leaving an opening along one of the long sides big enough for me to turn the belt right sides out. This part was not fun, but it's just the way I decided to make my belt this time. When I had the belt right sides out, I gave it a good press and hand stitched the opening close. At this stage, I have one end of the belt with a nice finished rounded end and one end with the raw edge out. So just going back to the belt carriers, since I made my belt smaller than the pattern, I also adjusted the length of my belt carriers accordingly. I cut each belt carrier just one inch longer than the finished width of the belt. Because the belt is also lighter, I decided to only have two belt carriers stitched to the dress, one on each side seam. A hump jumper will be very helpful here, but if you don't have one, then slow cranking is your friend. With the carrier stitched in place, it is finally time to sew the flounce to the skirt. I like to do this as the last and final step because the flounce can kind of get in the way of sewing the carriers. Just like before, clip the seam allowance so the curved raw edge match up nicely with the skirt. When you're done sewing, press the seam allowance towards the skirt. And that's it, you're done! The other reason why I decided to only have two belt carriers on the side seams for this dress is because I feel like this version of the dress is something that I would want to wear without the belt sometimes. So having the belt carriers on both the front and back of the dress would be just a little bit too distracting without the belt. So if you are either sewing a lighter belt, if you hate sewing belt carriers, or if you're considering having the option of not wearing the belt all the time, then just having two belt carriers areas on the side seams is an option. I hope you have found this video tutorial helpful. If you want to learn a little bit more about an alternative and arguably better way of sewing belts regardless of the size of your buckle, check out this vintage and modern belt sewing tutorial on my channel. And of course, I hope you follow me along for sewing, DIY, and a little bit of style. Happy sewing!